Well, you can see here the full cross bite that I have in the left side, okay, and also the cross bite that I have in the right. In the right, I love that I only have cross bite with the six, so the seven is going to help me, okay, to solve the, the cross bite in the right side. But in the left, the cross bite is involving, okay, all the second molar, first molar, premolars, and also almost cross by with the 13 where I have this interference. Okay, in the lower arch, you can see here where we don't have a lot of, um, we have minimum, minimum, um, minimum crowding. Okay. We are going to expand. I didn't ask in the software for IPR, but I'm going to do the IPR. Okay. I'm going to do some IPR just breaking the contact points. I will do about 0.2 millimeters of IPR more or less between the liner 20. Okay. I do it many times. Okay. I do it many times in cases where I don't ask because when I need to do this 0.2, 0.1, Many times I don't ask for that in the in the software, but I do it in the clinical way. Okay, so the key point here is okay. How to expand? How to expand the arch? Okay, so let me show you first. And later I will show you the filters and the and the attachments. As you can see. I'm expanding, rotating, it's allowed the molars at the same time. Okay, and I'm using also, I'm solving the rotation of incisors and canines at the same time. Remember that you have to solve the rotations at the same time that you do the expansion. I'm going to do more expansion in the, in the left side because it's where I had the curl by from the seven. Okay, and as you can see the 17 more let me show you the superimposition here so you will see okay how we do the expansion okay and also i am increasing the buccal root torque at the same time okay so expand and also the space of the expansion is used to reduce as you can see here some protrusion of the upper incisors Okay, we start like this and expand, rotate, and allow the molars, giving back a root torque. And as you can see, I'm doing about one, two, three, four, five millimeters of expansion of the first molar. I read one, two, three, four, five, almost six millimeters of expansion in the right side and the same in the left. So when the people tell me what is the limit, what are the limits, okay, the, the limit is in the bone. But if you plan the movement in the way that I plan this movement that is doing expansion, messial rotation at the same time, and also increasing the buccal root torque at the same time, little by little changing every week, every 10 days, you allow the bone to create new bone. You allow the body to create new bone. You, you stimulate the cell differentiation is what we are doing. If you don't plan from the root, if you only tell the technician to expand, but not to increase the buccal root torque, you are not going to create the bone that we are looking for. But when you stimulate this movement from the root, as you know, we have the osteoblast and the osteoclast, you stimulate the cell differentiation and little by little, as you can see, we can achieve this huge expansion. It's crazy, right? We are doing a lot of expansion. Okay, as you can see, let me show you the other side, one side. What I'm doing, as you can see how I reduce the protrusion and the torque of the upper incisors, pay attention, okay? I use the space of the expansion to reduce the protrusion of the upper incisors. At the same time, I also reduce a little bit the proclination and the protrusion of the lower incisors, just a little bit, just to enough, okay? Enough to at least, okay? Not to increase 
the protrusion of the upper in lower incisors. Okay, I reduce a little bit, like about half millimeter, one millimeter more or less. Okay, from here to here, from here to here. Okay, and the other side, starting from here, bilateral, uh, bilateral cross bite, and on the left side, as you can see, is also involved in the second molar. Okay. If you want to reduce the torque of the upper incisor, it's mandatory to create the space of the back. So what I'm telling them is to expand the arch and use the space of the expansion to reduce the torque. Can you see that? Okay, can you see? Look. Okay. Look at this huge expansion. And how is possible to do this huge expansion? where if you don't have anchorage here in the back because you know to expand in the right side is easier because the second molar is not in cross bite so i can use the second molar as anchorage to expand okay i use the second molar as anchorage to expand and in this side is easier how to do it how do you think we have to do it in the other side as you can see is a full cross bite seven six five four almost three to here the way to do it as you can see here i'm going to show you what i did i bond buttons in the palatal surface of both molars and in the right side second premolar and first molar and in the lower arch, I bond buttons also in the left side seven and six, and in the right side six and five. So I use buttons in the upper to buttons in the lower to use cross elastics. So the patient to solve the deep bite, sorry, the cross bite was using not really a strong elastic. What she was using was a 3.5 ohms of elastics. Okay, all day, and this elastic helped me to increase the anchorage, and that's why I could expand also the seven. Okay, if you have the seven in cross bite, but you don't have anchorage, you don't have the wisdom that it's not possible to solve it with the liner because you don't have anchorage to solve it. The liner is enough, the liner is not enough. So I used the cross elastic, she was using 3.5 ohms to get this result and as you can see here what i did later as you can see when the cross bite was solved then in the second phase i put some screws to intrude the molars a little bit and it and with this overjet it allowed me the mandible to even increase even more the overbite okay the attachments well in is the most important attachment for me in this case are the attachments uh, that I have, I, that I bond in the first molars, because these attachments uh, are for anchorage, and as you know, we are going to to expand a lot. So you have the risk of inclination of the crown. The way to reduce the this risk of inclination of the crown is um, is reducing the um, reducing the um, increasing sorry the buccal rotor while you are expanding. So that's why it's mandatory not to tell the, the technician only expand. It's, uh, I told about that in the in the lesson about the how do you have to to communicate with the technicians. So you have to tell them that you want to expand, you want to rotate mesial out the molar, you have to give back al rotor. So the back al rotor uh, compensate the tendency of the crown to 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 incline, and also this attachment that we have in in molars are passive attachments that can help me okay to increase that. Okay, the other are um, optimized attachments. Today I will remove the optimized attachment and I will put uh, conventional because as you know, my protocol right now is using uh, conventional attachments.